Ultra processed foods are made mostly from substances extracted from foods such as fats, starches, added sugars, and hydrogenated fats. They may also contain additives like artificial colors and flavors or stabilizers. They make up 57% of the UK diet from the research I did and the risks are becoming even more evident. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ifechi Health and Wellness. I've been concerned about the diagnosis of certain conditions in younger people. It's a huge concern for me, so I have to look into what actually is the problem? What is the contributory factors to these conditions being diagnosed on people as young as anything you can think of? And it boils down to what we eat and how they are processed. So today, I want us to look into foods which are ultra processed. Because sometimes it's out of ignorance that we do some of the things we do and eat some of the things we eat. We don't know that we are causing long-term damages to ourselves. So I have to go into research some things and I want to share it with us. Almost all foods is processed to some extent. Even if you cook, even if you cook your food from scratch, you probably use things like flour, olive oil, tin tomatoes, none of which are in their raw states and other things that we add. But ultra-processed food is very different. It contains industrial substances that you won't find in your kitchen, along with additives to make them taste good. You know, when I see some people, when they are cooking, they open this sachet, they add, they open this sachet, they add. It will be good for us to pause and look at the labels of those sachets that we add to our foods. What, why does it make our foods so tasty? We have to go back to basics and use natural things to flavor our food. A lot of people are being diagnosed with all sorts, including children, and it's a cause of concern for me, and it should be a cause of concern for everybody. Ultra-processed foods can be very tasty and delicious. But unfortunately, there are two recent large studies that I looked into, which showed that it significantly raises the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. You know, these studies are just the latest in a growing body of research that shows how harmful ultra-processed food is to our health. We have to be very careful. Infectious diseases doctor at the Hospital for Tropical Diseases in London, I remember his name now, he cites researches or research showing that a high consumption of ultra-processed food is linked to obesity, cancer, type 2 diabetes, depression, dementia, and tooth, uh, tooth decay, among other things. Dementia, Alzheimer's, is on the increase. People as young as in their 40s are being diagnosed. So it's no longer, oh, it's for older people. And that's boils down to the way we have been eating. Our lifestyle have changed over the years. What are you know, forefathers ate. It's no longer what we eat now. Everything is so ultra processed. And we want a quick fix. We just want to make it tasty so that people will love it to our own detriment. You know, when you look at, when you go to, to buy some of the things we, we buy, there are no health warnings on ultra processed foods. 
I'm talking about the UK where I live. There's no, no warnings there. But there are lots of red flags that may point to something containing ultra-processed uh, food or something that shows that this uh, food that we are about to consume or something that we are about to add to our food is ultra-processed. Because if you look at things at the back of the of whatever you're buying, look for the first three or the first two things listed there. That's what that food or that container or that can or whatever contains. Some of these things are quite cheap. You know, you just think, oh, it's fine. Let me just buy this because it's quite cheap and I need to manage things for my family. Yes, they may be cheaper, but you are consuming something that may be detrimental to your health. We have to be more intentional about what we consume. Sometimes when I see some things we call, I mean, if, if we can maybe treat ourselves once in a while and go back to plan, I kept saying this, that would be very helpful. Examples of ultra processed foods include things like ice cream, ham, sausages, crisps, or chips, mass produced bread, breakfast cereals, biscuits, carbonated drinks, fruit flavored yogurts, instant soups, and some alcoholic drinks, including heavy ones like whiskey, rum, gin, and all the rest of it. But you may be wondering, well, all that you have listed here, if they are all examples of ultra processed food, what do we eat then? Well, for example, ice cream, there's no high, um, food value really in ice cream apart from maybe in hot weather people like to have it, it cools you down and all the rest of it. You're just adding sugar to your system. Things like all some of these things I just listed here, ham, sausages, crisps, and mass-produced bread. There, you know, there's something that you can actually do without. There are alternatives. If you really have, must have bread, maybe it's very quick to make bread. You can make it yourself or limit the amount. Or there are ones in the shop that are not uh, white bread or you can have whole grain bread and have it you know, sparingly. It does not mean that you will not have these things, but you can choose uh, healthier options. And if you indulge in some of these ultra processed food, don't remain there. Don't always go back to eating them all the time because that's when you have problem. But if you have to, for example, I remember uh, my video that I did um, on my other channel, Ifechi Family, when we when, when we went for uh, to, uh, for the conference, I had some breakfast cereals there. But I've, I don't have any in the house here. We don't buy uh, cereals. We have stopped using cereals and, and fresh milk for a long time. We use almond and or we can even make, make the almond milk ourselves. You just do little, little things to help yourself. But when you go out once in a while, yes, you can indulge in some of these things, enjoy them, and then go back to plan. I've always said that because some people think that, oh, you have to avoid this, you have to avoid this. What are we going to eat to be alive? No, there are so many things to eat. You know, ordinary fruit and vegetables, fresh okra, just make it, put lots of onion there, and just drink it as soup. It, and then maybe add a little bit of fufu and eat with it. Okra soup without much oil is very healthy soup to have. Some of our soups that we use for our fufu are not very healthy, even though we enjoy them. But there are very healthy ones. There are healthy options. And the additives, I cannot overemphasize on the amount of additives. Those such as I see you pour in your soup, open this and pour, open this and pour. Can you please pour, pause sometimes and look at the back of those labels? Do they contain MSG? If they do, please uh, cut down on them or stop using them completely. Find other ways. We have a native ogi, we have okay, we have native things, even bay leaf and stuff, ginger, garlic. Those things are natural things that can flavor uh, add flavor to your food. Once you stop, once once you cut down and start using alternatives, your taste buds will get used to the change. 
I'm going to stop this particular video here. I may up, um, upload a little more about these ultra processed foods. I'm going to stop this one here as I don't want it to be too long. Please let us be health aware. A lot of people are being diagnosed with all sorts and we can't just keep quiet. We have to keep talking. If people will hear, fine. If uh, there are at least few people that will hear, that's um, a bonus and that will be very, very good. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye and God bless.